Have you seen the message shift to park in the instrument cluster, although it's already in park and there is actually a P in the display as well? Well, then you probably have an issue with this. This is the gear shift assembly. So when you put this in park, it don't recognize being in park. So if you have this issue, I think you should stick around for a few minutes. And if you've never seen this issue on your automatic NG95, Great, that's really good for you. I'm happy for you. But if you have seen the issue, stick around. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Marcus and this is Subcars. So here at Subcars we do DIYs, reviews, go to some meetings and much more. So today's video is about the gear shift assembly in the NG95. You've probably seen the shift to park message in the instrument cluster, although it's already in park. Very annoying thing. And basically what the problem is, is a small switch inside, which you reach when you get to the park mode. So going from all the way back to the front, you press and hold this. This is, of course, the button on the shift knob. So you press and hold, and you move it to park. And then when you release the button, there's a small click, and this enables the switch. So the switch is a small component uh, with a small spring that activates when you release the gear shift button. So the alternatives for this is actually three. You can go the quick and dirty way and that is not something that I recommend and it's basically short-circuiting the wires that go here to the switch which basically means that you're telling the car that it's always in park. The signal coming from the switch is transmitted to something that is called the BCM, so the body control module. And as you may know, you can always see the P in the display, even if the gear shift assembly doesn't think it's in P. And that's basically because you have information going to the, or you have information in the TCM, which is the transmission control module and it's located in the engine bay and there is also a enclosure with some kind of switch in it that knows where the uh, selection is. So there is a wire connected to this which goes back and forth changing the selection in the uh, gear shift selector in the engine bay. So between P, neutral, reverse and so on. So the transmission control module, it knows that it's in P, but the body control module don't know it's in P when you have a defect switch. And I'm not sure how much communication there is going on between the BCM and the TCM, but obviously there is a reason for having this micro switch and that's why we're going to change the micro switch in today's video and we're not going to go the quick and dirty way that's up to you i believe it generates some fault codes inside the vehicle system although i'm not 100 percent certain because i haven't checked but that's up to you guys so we're going to leave alternative one for someone else and we're going to focus on alternative two which is changing the switch and as you may know or have seen, I went with the alternative three, which basically is buying a new gear shift assembly and having a garage replacing it. So that's why we're not going to make the, the uh, procedure where I remove this from the car. I'm going to briefly show you what it's all about. So the first thing you need to do is to remove this sides here. They're made of plastic and they have clips so either use your hands to pull them out and maybe some plastic removal tool as well. So it's the same on this side 
as the other side. Basically, almost everything is the same besides the electrical connectors. So get these off first on both sides. And then you have some screws here on the side. One is behind this plastic lid and the other one is here. So you basically need to move the seat to the front, to the rear and a bit up depending on what you need to do. So it's the same on this side as it is on the other side. So there's no difference. And then you have the panel here around the gear selector itself. That has to be removed of course. And you need to remove this. And later on you also need to remove this and the knob from the actual gear selector assembly. Either you can do it now or you can do it later when you have the whole thing on the desk. So if you're having a bit of an awkward working position here in the car, I suggest saving this for later. This is dead easy to get off. You just grab this and work it like this. It will eventually come off. Like this. So here are some locking tabs that you need to work with. It might be easier to have it on the desk instead of doing it in the car because you can you can move this around while removing the surrounding panel here. So take this out and then take the panel out. It's the same procedure as with this here above. Uh, you have clips all around. Start working here and then just remove the clips and then the connectors for all the things that are connected. And since most of the things here is uh, a bit sensitive to scratches, I suggest covering things up with a towel or something while working. And then you, of course, need to remove the center console here with the buttons and the display. And you can use your fingers to unclip this, so it's only being held by clips here around the uh, panel and then you have the connectors for the uh, buttons and the night panel button. This button can be either it's dead easy or it's pain in the yeah you know. So just work with the connector to get the panel loose. I will put the document so you can see what you need to do to get the center console out of the car. It's basically removing some screws and connectors and just taking it very easy. So there will be a PDF document for you guys to download. It's on my Dropbox or a box link in the description section below. So I'm going to show you or illustrate the fault of the small switch by connecting a uh, multimeter to the signals coming from the switch. So you can actually see that there is a fault because when the switch is activated, the resistance in the switch should be zero. So let's go ahead and move on to the lab. So the switch is located in here and the two wires here are coming from the switch directly. So if you go with a quick and dirty solution, these are the two wires that you can short circuit, but we're not going to do it the so-called bad way. We're going to do it the right way. So we're going to get inside here and change the switch. So the cables they run below together with the red and black. So if we look at the other side, you have a connector here with those wires. And behind this cover is a PCB. So we're going to open this just like that. And here you have the PCB with some components. The external connector going to the wires 
or the harness in the car is this. So it contains signals from the switch, some power, and signals from the manual shifting as well. And pin 6 up here is the signal from the switch, and pin 2 is ground. So we're going to measure the resistance between ground and the switch signal. So we're going to hook up the multimeter here. Red one on the signal up here. And the black one on ground, which is pin 2 down here. And let's turn on the multimeter and have it on ohms. So currently it shows OL, which means that the resistance is infinite. There is no connection. And now we're going to move this slowly and uh, see what happens. First we could actually take a screwdriver to test the small switch because it's behind here and see what the result is. As you may know, it's sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. This gear shift assembly is not healthy because I've had this issue for maybe 12 months. So sometimes the resistance is too high in the switch, as you can see. And sometimes it connects. And that is basically what is causing the car not to recognize the signal coming from the switch. So if we move this, it might show the correct value, it might not. When I release this, so here we have four point something in ohms. That just might be a bit too high for the uh, body control module. Now I pushed it again, and now we're at 143, which means this switch is not very reliable. And sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. Currently it's, as you can see, toggling between 5 and sometimes 140. And 150, for example. So we need to get the switch out and I'm going to show you how you proceed with disassembling the gear shift assembly. So besides getting the PCB out of the way, there are actually locking pins inside here and over here, just behind here. There's a locking pin as well. So I have already removed the locking pin on this side because I wanted to know if it was possible or not. And this is what it looks like. So it's 6 mm in diameter and it's 50 mm long. So I'm not going to get new ones, I'm going to reuse these ones later on. And to get them out, you need this, it's a uh, pin puncher tool. <coughs> 6mm and then I have a 5mm to pin punch out the other tool later on. And you might need something else, the last millimeters, maybe a worn out screwdriver or something. And of course you need a good hammer. So this is already out, as I told you, and once the PCB is removed here, you actually need to use a uh, Dremel or similar tool to get the plastic out of the way. <clears throat> Otherwise you can't actually punch the uh, locking pin out of the way. So before we start drilling or sanding down the plastic, I'm going to remove the PCB from here so it won't be in the way. Just like this. And if you if you want to, you could actually disconnect the uh, cable down here. 
just to be on the safe side. So it was in the gear shift assembly like this. And there are some components on the back as well. So let's move on. As you can see, the pin needs to go through this area here. So we need to remove that to be able to knock it out, either from that side or this side. I think I will do it from this side. So let's get going. So that's probably enough. So there should be some room now for the uh, for the pin to come out when I hammer it or pinch it out from the other side. So let's give it a try and as you can see there is not much damage done to the plastic. I just made room for the pin to come out. So if you if you maybe later on want to add something you could just add some silicone or something to seal up this gap here I'm not going to put that on this one it's fine just the way it is I think so let's start using the hammer with some force and you actually need to hammer it real good. So um, here it goes. Just hammer. Make sure there is room for the pin to come out. Here you can see the pin on its way out. Just keep going. and it's almost out. So there the pin is out. It went on the floor. Great. Now we just need to get this out again. So we're going to hammer it from the other side with the with the other tool I have. This one. Now the tool is out as well, and as you can see, the whole thing just let go here. So
So now both the pins are out and this is off as well. And now we get a much better view of the uh, inside. As you can see here, we have the uh, switch located here. So the next thing is actually to get this out of its way here. Just remove it. And I have some new switches in the lab. So we're going to desolder this. Move over the spring that you see here to the new switch. And put the new switch in. Put the thing back together. And check with the multimeter once more. So the easiest way to get the switch out I think is to put the screwdriver here and put some pressure on the pin above here. And slowly removing it from its position. Like this. So we need to get it out so we can desolder these wires and put the new one in. So I have some new switches here. And this is what they look like. So I'll put the link in the description section to these. You can find these on eBay. Or maybe if you have some other component source. But if you go onto the web and look at the normal distributors of electronic components, such as DigiKey or RS Components and Marser and so on, they usually require a minimum order quantity of maybe 1000 and I'm not going to do 1000 of these so I got 10 of these on eBay so just look in the description section there's a link they come without the spring so we're going to move that from this one onto this one and of course be very careful when you remove the spring so that it attaches in the same way. Also you can see here the black cable is on the top here aligned with the so-called button or yeah, mechanical pin and the second one is this magenta or purple white cable. So we're going to desolder this and we're going to remember that the black wire is in the same position as the pin. And we need to have some force when pulling it out from the from the uh, switch. So we need to put some thing on this later on, no problem. And the second one as well. Like that. So this is out of the way. And let's freshen these wires up before reusing them so that we don't get any short circuit later on. So I actually found some good shrinking tubes for refreshing the end of the cable here because it got very warm and the plastic wanted to move away from the, from the copper. So I just made some small uh, shrinking tubes here and we just heat them with a heating gun as you can see on the other one that's what it's going to look like so let's put that away and finish this off that's probably good enough
So that should do it. So now we have some fresh cables for later on when putting this back. So, the next thing is to move the uh, small spring here of the original switch onto the new one. So let's see if we can do that without destroying it because we don't want to destroy it, we want to reuse it. Just be very gentle here. Can be a bit tricky. You need to have some patience, of course, like always. So here it's off. And we might want to compress these a bit before putting them back on the new one. Like that. So here's the new switch. And it's going in like this. And the spring is going to be located down here. As you can see. So we need to get this back on. The new switch. And I actually think it's It's in place there. That's great. So here you can see the new switch with the old spring in place. So we need to get the cables back on the switch, of course. Just some soldering. I'm going to do some pre soldering, putting some. Solder on the uh, pins that will make the process a bit easier. And remember the black pin or the black cable on the pin that is aligned with the pin here. And as you can see, we have the new cables in place. They are soldered back to the switch. So let's put this thing back in the gear shift assembly. It can be a bit tricky because the cables are a bit short. But let's. Let's keep pushing the cable in here where they are supposed to be and see if we can get the switch down here again. <clears throat> yeah, they are not very long, these cables, so you
I wouldn't mind having a centimeter more. You could actually just extend the cables as well if you if you have some difficulties. So now it's back. So now it's back in where it's supposed to be. A tight fit with a new switch. Cables are soldered and let's put them back here in the slot here. Where they are supposed to be, like that, and now let's put this back together again with the cover and the uh, locking pins, and also the PCB, of course. And here are the locking pins. So here you can see the switch more in detail, where it's at, and the cables that we just soldered onto the switch. And now let's get this cover back on. So we need to get the cover back on and we need to hammer these locking pins back into place. So we just just put it on like that and while we have it in place we can check that everything is working. The switch it clicks, we can move the stick back and forth to the manual mode as well just to be on the safe side. Because there is a, a spring in here, this one, that pushes the lid up. So we need to hold this while putting back the locking pin. So like this, so here's the hole for the locking pin and I'm going to start off by doing that and then not to break anything put some plastic below like this and start hammering again because we need to get this through all the way. So now that's back in place and now it's the other side so we need to hammer it in from this side or maybe it's possible on the other side as well but there are just too many plastic edges on that side I think so back in and then continue with this perhaps like this to get it all the way in perfect so now it's back together again we need to put back the PCB as we removed before and that's located right here so just simply reconnect the connector like that and just put it back and there are some alignment pins so you just slide it on and here you can see that the plastic I removed it's it's not very much and I don't think that will be a problem so I'm not going to add anything 
in here. Let's put the, or no, let's not put the plastic lid back on. Let's hook up the multimeter now and see what kind of signal we have coming from the switch. So we're back here in the lab and we're going to hook up the multimeter again to the switch, which is pin 6, which is the signal from the switch, and pin 2 is the ground. So currently there is no connection because we're not pushing the switch. Now let's move the gear shifter to parking position. And as you can see now it's 0 0.5 ohms. So let's push this a few times. And if you remember the old one, it toggled between Sometimes it was like 4 or 5 ohms, and sometimes it was like 160. It should be consistent every time you press the button on the gear knob. It should go down to almost 0 ohms. As you can see, this switch is very healthy. And the old one was crap. I have been living with this issue for some time. So that's great, perfect, a new switch in. And yeah, let's put back the lid. Just as easy as it was removing it. Like this. So now everything is back together. So it's not very difficult to actually do this once you know how to do it and how to get the part. So the part was the switch from eBay that I bought and I explained that you can get this from other sources as well. But often a minimum order quantity of 1000 or more is required. So eBay was the easiest way. Not the cheapest way, but uh, not very expensive. So this was alternative two changing the micro switch on your own. So you just need a few tools, basic soldering uh, knowledge, and uh, yeah, it's back together again. So if we were to mount this in a NG95 now, it would probably work as good as the one I have in the car right now. Alternative three, which is the, the uh, it's not the cheapest one, uh, that's when you actually buy a whole new gear shift assembly and uh, you can fit that yourself. No programming need to be done or you could support your local garage. I had the local garage her here in the uh, southern part of Sweden. Uh, it's called Mannes and it's uh, one of the best guys when it comes to the NG95. They know all there is to know about the NG95. So, I supported them and actually the feeling with a completely new gear shift assembly is amazing. It probably feels now as it felt when the car was brand new. But if you're on a tight budget, changing the switch is just as good. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you did, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and drive safe.